So, around about four weeks ago, I just sent you an email saying I have an opportunity for you. And thankfully, Kirsty agreed. So, Kirsty at uh, Ormston Primary has got a set of digital ninjas that are the envy of just about every computer teacher who wants them coming to their school. There's B's in primary five. She's in my primary five, yeah. And can do there. Java already? Yep. So, this is the person that we want. So, Google Classroom and Chromebooks. Yep. She's your woman. So, I'll put the disclaimer on that. I am an ordinary primary school teacher. I'm not a computer scientist. Not Computing is not my, my background. Um, I'm just kind of accidentally a bit geeky and get myself hooked into stuff. So, I'll start with saying kind of where we are and how we've got to what, what we're doing. That's the wrong button. Ah! First disaster. F5. Go. It's okay. I have a mouse. I forgot what they do, but are you going to work? Or am I going to have to do it on there? I'm going to have to do it on there. Okay, so as a school, we had to work out what was important to us, and it was all all the usual stuff that we'd think about, working together, um, having a purpose for our learning, and making it real. And we decided that we wanted to prioritise our ICT as part of that. I'm very, very lucky that I've got a very supportive head teacher who is just about as geeky as I am, um, and she chose us to make it a whole school priority. Without that, we couldn't have got to where we are now, the investment in the technology that we have in school, and the time to train staff, um, to prioritise it with our children, um, and to work together through it. So we knew that we wanted our learners to be working together, we knew that we wanted it to be real life learning, um, and we want to know how to do it. So this is an example of our forward planning from really not very long ago. Yeah. And it's hilarious now when you show it to the children. And we were using this until not that long ago. And it's not what we want. This was, a, this was our ICT plans. It's not what the children... It makes no sense to the children. Because they're saying, why, why are we learning to press the send button? Or learning how to do... I understand how to use a computer sensibly and responsibly. Well, what does using it sensibly mean? If it's don't touch it, don't engage with it, don't fiddle with it and do exactly what I say, it's not really where I want them to be going with it. Teaching them how to have it as an outcome to log on and use a password. Well, children pick up their phones and constantly put their code in all the time. It's not a, it's, that's not where we need to be. So I just like that. That's just where we are with some of the... <laughs> Some of our staff and some of our, our pupils as well, you, we know how skilled children are at using technology. We know how skilled they are at getting on to computers. But what are they actually going to be doing with it? We had the situation that I suppose everybody's got of we have children that are pretty skilled and we're getting more and more so. How did we then match that with the staff skill level that we had? So we had a huge investment from our head teacher and our technology we had all this kit, and then where, where do we go to actually embed that across the school? It's taken time. It has taken time. To, David and I were just discussing this earlier. Things that we were sort of advocating years, months ago, are now becoming, oh, that actually, I can see where that, how that's going to help me as a teacher. I can see the application of that. Google Classroom, Google Docs are certainly ones that will fall into that, which we'll see kind of as I get there. Rubrics was the way we went with giving staff a structure. So we've moved away from I can turn on a computer, or I can log in. So what are you actually doing with it? What are you going... What's the value in the learning? Where is the learning in that? And it's in what they're doing with it. So no longer are we saying I can log into a discussion group. It's not really where we're going. We wanted to build in the collaboration. This is where Google Docs and classroom really came into it a lot. So we want children to be able to collaborate across classrooms, across groups, across schools and this was a tool that we were able to use to make that work. We also had to make sure that it was valuable time-wise and that pupils were engaged in what they were supposed to be doing. We had worries from, from staff and from parents. As soon as you put a device in front of people, are they doing what I want them to be doing? Or 
how do I make sure that they're not off on wherever it is they thought was a bad idea for them to be, whether that's social media or any one of the other things. So what does it actually look like in our classrooms? We have, are very lucky that we have Chromebooks in our classrooms. Um, we have roughly one device between every two children, between primary four and primary seven. So in that we have four classes. And that has been a priority to put those in the school. We haven't gone down the one-to-one -one route in some classes and left other classes without. We have kind of half a class set and share them about as teachers as, as we need to. We found that, that having one between two really made a big difference in, at minimum, in how the children could collaborate together. This is an example of my primary sevens from last year who were using um, Google Sites to build a topic website. So they were reviewing their learning, they'd been researching this all together. Um, if there are any iffy bits, my apologies, it's obviously the children's work. Um, so this is what they wanted to do. This took away the whole bit of, I want you to collaborate, here's one sheet of paper and a desk of four of you. How are you actually going to manage that, all children working together? How are you also going to manage the fact that somebody <coughs> might contribute more than somebody else? Somebody might um, choose to opt out. And we wanted to make sure that this was all trackable and relevant to what, so we could actually see the outcomes for each individual child, um, which was very important to us. They're also making, taking this into the real world and real world learning. So this is live, it's on the web, they published their websites. That also took us into the bit of what information are you choosing to share and where are you choosing to share it? Which is something that the, obviously the more we use online tools, the more we're exposing our children to these devices, the more we need to keep underpinning what we're doing. We're not saying don't share, you know, the number of us that are in here that are, on, that are tweeting and use, starting to use Twitter and things in school, but it's getting that balance of what are we actually sharing and with who. We then moved to looking at discussion groups, so another within Google Docs. Um, discussion groups, this was one on the outbreak of World War I. Um, and the children's task was to both post questions and respond to questions. Um, we found this to be really valuable because it, it sort of negated the difference between some pupils who were hugely confident and would dominate a group discussion and some pupils who were too shy to put their own opinions forward. Um, and using something like this, although their names were there, because they had the medium of going through the technology, they didn't feel quite so intimidated <coughs> challenging somebody else. So there, there are two children um, that were of particular note. Um, a boy, who, Jake, who was very, very political, really had great understanding of, the, of what was going on in the world. And one of my shyer girls was able to challenge him and say, actually, I don't agree. And that was not a situation that would have happened in the classroom. Because they're on a discussion group. Again, this was being able to talk about privacy settings, about um, how to actually contribute to these things safely. If we were to teach road safety, we wouldn't do it just in a classroom and say you're never actually allowed to go and see the roads. So if we're teaching privacy settings and safety and internet safety, things like that, we should actually be allowing the children to experience this, posting things, but posting what is safe to do so. Um, I'll just jump back to that one. So this was one where they were able to then go in and rate um, answers. So not only were they contributing to the discussion, they were then able to go in and say, well, what was actually was the best answer and why was it the best answer? Um, it's quite hard to read on there, but the reason, according to one of our children for the outbreak of World War I, was Germany wanted to attack France and moved all of their army to Belgium. Britain had told Belgium that if anyone attacked them, they would help. So Britain and Germany... So Britain told Germany to move their army or they would declare war. Germany didn't move their army, so Britain declared war. And all of the British Empire got involved. It, that's when it turned from a Europe war into a world war. For an 11-year-old, it's a fairly, fairly good understanding. And the children were then able to see themselves. Well, the ones that just said, because Britain was friends with Russia and France, as the reason, they were able to then balance that out amongst themselves and rate it themselves. So... 
we use a lot of our literacy is done. This is an example of what I view as a teacher. So quite often I have that up on the board and the children are all working on their own devices. Um, these little tiles will auto-update um, as the children are working on it. So as a sort of monitoring tool, it's very easy to see if you've got one completely blank square belonging to a child um, or if somebody's doing nothing but changing the coloured backgrounds, as you can see that some of these have. Um, it allows us to watch what's going on, but the children are all still working independently. We also use it hugely for peer and self-assessing. Um, so our peer and self-assessing, when we're doing this, they put suggested edits on, so you still, the, the author still retains ownership of their document and the other pupils will suggest edits or will leave feedback. So the ownership doesn't come away from the original child. It's also infinitely easier to manage than post-its stuck in jotters um, that obviously fall out and then you've got... The, also the other bit of a child quite often doesn't want to give over their jotter to somebody else. That can be a, well, this is my jotter and I don't want you to damage it or I don't, want you to, I don't trust you with that. Again, this adds that little sort of layer of security. We can also review it all on here. So there's, there's nothing... I can't ever have a pupil sitting and scribbling notes in a jotter that you actually would prefer weren't being written in the jotter because it's all public and it's all up there on the board. It can be done in a much more subtle way. So these suggested edits, the people can then accept them and nobody really needs to know if it's sort of simple things like spelling and things like that. So that was where we were sort of this time last year with what we were doing in our classroom. And we had managed to embed that with in individual classes and it was starting to allow collaboration between classrooms. Um, but most of that, to be honest, was when the children were physically moving around classrooms and then saying, oh, look what I've done. There wasn't a huge amount of sort of between the, through the walls collaboration type thing. We also wanted to... This is what the children were doing in school. How do we then make sure that they've got access to all this stuff even when they're not in school or not in my classroom? So how am I going to join all that up? Um, this is when it started to become very relevant about what devices children were on and where they were using. Uh, where they were using their devices, rather. We had the Chromebooks I said in the upper school. In the lower school, we have our council provision netbooks. And we wanted to make sure that children still had access to all the same resources and all the same experiences, regardless of the device. The device was just the tool to get us into these things. Um, and we really didn't want to focus on device specific. We are lucky that we have um, an open learning network in our school that pupils can bring their own devices and log on and can use within the school. This again added this whole other thing of lots of different devices in our schools. So how are we going to, as teachers and the staff, make sure that we've got a handle on that? Um, and our solution, and our solution at the moment that's working very well, is using Airhead, um, which allowed us to pull all of our um, online resources and things together. Then I've kind of become a bit of a fan, because it works. The reason why I'm a fan of the Google app stuff is because it's what we've got, and it works. Sometimes I feel like I'm on payrolls of people. Unfortunately, I'm not. It's what I have, and it works. So the two aspects of this was the first... Um, box that you can see that's got sort of twi the tweets and things on it, the larger boxes. That is the home page that every time a child logs on, that's what they see. And that we've got that set so that all their devices, that's what will come up as well. So as a teacher, you know that when they open their device, that's what they're going to see. And from there, the one with all the tiles on it, again, regardless of their device, that's what they're going to see. It takes out all that of how do I get to where and where are my apps and how do I do this and how I've done that on a Chromebook but on a netbook. Um, and we just use a much simpler version of the tiles for the infants. So we, there's just one that's removed most of the um, like Google Groups and sites infants are not going to be using independently yet. So they're just not there yet. And as they go up through the school, they'll be added on. So Classroom. Classroom, we have started, started using last year. And it was really just uh, an introduction as... I was saying, um, we were saying before, my class get the unfortunate job of being guinea pigs for all sorts of things. Um, and we started, to, we started to play with it last year. 
this year I've got primary five class, so they were kind of toward, towards the younger end of, of the pupils we'd originally been working with. And that was a bit of a challenge of how we're going to take what we were doing and make sure that our primary fives, wonderful as some of them are, how are we going to make sure that they're okay? So first simple thing was we already had Airhead and uh, it integrated with Airhead. So the little calendar view that you can sort of see um, in the middle there is going to pull all of their Google Classroom stuff and display it on that first page. So when a pupil logs on, that's what they see in front of them every single time. Um, we were originally using Google Groups to do this sort of thing, um, but found teachers find that really cumbersome to set up Google Groups um, and to manage email addresses and set out, uh, send out rather group emails. P uh, teachers just kind of got themselves in a bit of a tizz over that and uh, allocating roles and things. Classroom solved our problem for that. So when a pupil <coughs> logs on, even my primary fives they see a box that just has that top bar um, and it has it's chopped it off in my picture but there's just a little code and put that on the board the, ch the child just says join class types in the code and they're instantly there so there was none of this setting up of email addresses and transferring pupils who's where or anything like that um, we were able to obviously set work which this is an example of our homework from last week and when the pupils log on, they will see exactly what's due. So you can see the first box. Um, this is a pupil's their reading group, their homework, and the stuff we are using in class. I've put a class one in there as well, because quite often there's documents that I would want them to be working on in class. It's a way of distributing that. But I don't want it to get confused, them to get confused with their homework stuff. So we can colour code it and keep it separate. They know that the blue one is inside class and the green one is home. Um, again, with working with sort of primary fives and primary fours, they really needed that differentiation between the two to help them work around it. Um, a value that, that I didn't really foresee with, so with using Classroom was a dialogue that has started between pupils and myself. The pupils know as they're doing their homework that I have the app on my phone and if they send questions about what they're supposed to be doing or how they're supposed to be doing it, they know that I'm getting an alert on my phone and can respond to them. To begin with, that meant incessant questions and just chat and smiley faces and various other things right up until 10 o'clock at night. <coughs> Thanks, guys. Nine-year-olds that were up doing homework, but they were doing homework at that time of night. So, so for, for the first little bit, there was a, I just kept replying to everything because I wanted them to engage. And it's now become much tighter and they're actually asking specific questions. I'm not sure how to attach this sort of link. Um, how many tasks should I be doing? How should I be doing them? And just this week, the f we've had the first peer-to-peer -peer collaboration. So they've posted a question and the other pupils have answered rather than me having to jump in. And I've just gone in and said, yeah, that's, that's exactly what you should be doing. Because every single time they're logging in and they're seeing the purple, well, this is my purple screen, um, every time they're seeing that, it's allowing the pupils to take much more ownership of what they're doing and managing it. So we had it working with the pupils. Took a while. We focused purely on the inside school stuff. So before I set any homework, we did it in class. We used the class group. They turned things in to me in class. So when they open, if they click on the, on the open box, um, it then changes to turn in, and they can turn in whatever work it is they've done, submit it to me, and I'll see, I see it all on my screen. Um, we did that just in class to begin with, so that I could support the pupils, pupils could support each other, before we then added in the mix of parents, which is where I'm coming to now. So when we started to share this parents, this was parents the first questions we had was, well, how do I, as a parent, know what's going on? Parents are used to the homework diary coming home, written on paper, that they initialed and sent back to school. And that was their method of communication back and forward. Parents were concerned as to how, how is that going to work if we don't have paper copy. The other thing is, how would they know that their child is actually doing homework and isn't just playing around on the computer? Um, it seems to be... Sort of two halves of parents. One half of parents says, yeah, my child is brilliant on the computers. And when you actually drill down, they're playing their Xbox all the time and they can't really use 
technology to help their learning. And on the other hand, we've got parents that are saying, I'm not comfortable with the children being on computers and just playing. I want to know exactly what they're doing. Um, and this was a really important bit. Communication, obviously. Um, so in order to link to our parents, we set up parents' guides. So the document that's up here was written along with our digital ninjas. Um, and it was just our went out to all parents en masse explaining the basics of how we were using Google Classroom. We use Twitter a lot to, to up that this is actually our learning um, and to make sure that parents realised that it wasn't just playing on computers. Our digital ninjas, which is my cause at the moment, um, who are our digital pu our pupil leaders, who, let's see, um, who really promoted it and supported other classes and supported it to work together. We are about to run parent workshops where I'm actually going to get the parents to come in with their pupils, with their children rather, and sit and do their homework in class with me and show them how to turn it in and how to submit it. Um, again, with many people have spoken before this idea, and I don't like it of, of digital natives. And I find that a problematic term because it depends on skill level. And you, we have children that are very highly skilled and we have children that aren't very highly skilled. We have adults that are very highly skilled and we have adults that, that aren't. So I find those, those terms difficult. But parents were concerned because it was something that they didn't particularly understand. <coughs> the next really important bit, and this has been a huge part of what we were doing, was we encouraged parents to sign up as if they were a pupil on their own device. Because it was just that sign-in code... And because the children's Google accounts can be logged onto any device, it doesn't matter, the parents were able to basically view on their phone as if they were their child. So they could see every notification, they could see when their child turned something in, they could see all the they could see the calendar and see everything that was due. They could also see the dialogue with me, which I think was important because they could then see that this was monitored, this wasn't just something where we were on the computers and off we go. They could see the collaboration going back and forward. And it has been really, really positive to see it being used both for pupils doing homework online, Google Documents and Prezi's and various other things, but also just using it as an organisational tool for them to do it on paper. So we've not stopped building models for, for homework. We still have the glue and sticking that parents love us for when we ask them to suddenly magic a model out of somewhere. And that's still happening. But the instructions for that, instead of going home on a piece of paper to get lost in the school bag and be rediscovered, it's been sent as a notification to the parent's phone. And the, child, the children can access it as well. Whistle stop tour through what we're doing. And, yeah, sorry, a bit of a shameless plug. It's not for me. It's for our, my digital ninjas, who are, our, as I said, our pupil leaders, digital leaders. They don't like the word leaders. They're ninjas. They turned around to me yesterday and said, leaders, that's really boring. So anyway, the digital ninjas and they are looking for followers, um, especially looking for any other pupils in schools that are doing similar sorts of things, um, and that's their their website, which you can find through their, their Twitter. Um, it's probably the easiest way. That, as I said, I am just a just a class teacher, um, and those are the things that we're doing that we're finding works at the moment for engaging our pupils and engaging our parents. Um, it's constantly evolving, so who knows where we'll be next time. Thank you.